Okay, let's begin. Uh, ah, yes. It's a tensor product, yeah, yeah. So let me write it down actually now, uh, right now, in fact, because uh, so we look at spinners. The other, the other, um, um, yeah, the space-time vector. Actually, I've written it down, but I didn't, I didn't, I, I didn't emphasize it using this this language, right? But but let me do it now. Um, so, uh, and it will also make this uh, daughter and undaughter notation. Uh, highlight why why it is why it makes sense. Okay, so let me write it down. So so yes. So what we is uh, uh, leading to is that we're bouncing a spin one half um, dotted and undotted uh, spinner. Uh, like I said, there are two different classes of spinners because there's no transformation that will bring you between L and L star. Right? You can define L in whatever way you want. But, the, but I can always find is complex conjugate. And that guy, I can never find a change of basis that I can uh, get L star from L. And there are always two classes of spinners. Uh, but then, now, uh, the question is, yeah, then what about if I claim that is this, the fundamental, uh, the most, the, from, from which everything else can be built? That is, in fact, my claim. That, uh, that everything, all other four-dimensional space-time fences can be built out of these spin half uh, objects. Then, how do I view the space-time vector that we make again with? Right? That's how we discover special relativity. So we're going to make sure that we can actually now understand the original space-time vector using this new language of space. Right? So, so it comes down to the following. So it's uh, L. A, B, uh, actually, let me remind, remind ourselves. So, lambda A goes like this, uh, lambda A dot goes like L star, A dot B dot, lambda B dot. And now the question is, and then we, we also figured out the upper index transforms the opposite way. And now the question is, what about our uh, old friend, the the mu. What about this guy? Right. So of course we know that this guy transforms under the usual Lorentz transformation matrix matrices. But, but now we should find a way to embed this guy in this new language. So the way to do it is what we were alluding to previously, which is that um, you have to contract. So let me use the momentum vector because that's actually going to be very important. So in fact, we discovered uh, SL2C by first studying this object. And remember, this is two by this is a two by two object. And so P mu sigma mu uh, uh, has two indices, which in fact uh, you will recognize uh, soon that this is in fact P A B dot the the A B component of uh, this object, the eighth column, uh, sorry, eighth row B column of this object is what we call P A B dot. The question is why are these spinners and why is there a uh, undotted and, and dotted index? Uh, th these are crucial questions. So, so now I'm going to explain it. Okay. So, in fact, um, uh, we have already seen, this is just a reminder, that uh, even at the level of matrix uh, manipulation, matrix algebra, this guy, let me write it, simplify this as sigma uh, dot p. Remember that when I replace it with L and L dagger, sandwiching, sandwiching it, this preserves the permissivity of this guy. So if p is real, this guy is a permission object. So if I change my basis in this way, it preserves the permissivity and uh, provided the determinant of L is 1, then in fact, uh, what, what it does is that determ so let me remind you, P, determinant of sigma dot P is in fact P mu P alpha P alpha. And so when you do this 
uh, transformation. Remember, we said that this will transform the sigma. By sigma, it, the sigma mu's are complete. So all that has that has to do is that it has to rotate the sigma mu's amongst themselves. And we, in fact, argue that it can not, not be anything else other than um, than uh, uh, than than a Lorentz uh, transform momentum dotted into the original sigma. Right. So this is in fact p prime alpha p prime alpha, where p prime is in fact given by uh, lambda. Uh, let's say this is alpha. This would be lambda alpha beta p beta. Okay. So so all this. Uh, that I'm talking about here, the realization of the Lorentz uh, transformation uh, through this uh, SL2C transformation uh, is, in fact, uh, if uh, related to this, if you, if you just put indices on it. Okay. So let's see what that means. Um, uh, right. So I was. Uh, so then I'll come back to left and right-handed, and that was my next topic. But but. It, just as well, we can talk about this. So uh, it's not too difficult, in fact. Uh, let's think about what this means. P mu sigma mu is permission. Whenever uh, whenever uh, P is real. Okay. So what that means is that this is now a linear algebra uh, oh, if it's a permission operator, you must be able to uh, uh, do a spectrum decomposition. Right? So, so you're going to end up with uh, lambda plus. This is not this is not a spinner. So let me just say it again. Right? This these are eigenvalues of this guy. So let me maybe I'll write it this way. sigma dot p must have uh, because it's permission acting. On a two-dimensional vector space, it must have two distinct uh, eigen states. So let me call it sigma plus c plus. This will give me lambda plus c plus. Uh, this is just a label. Uh, and then I must have another one where uh, it's minus. So let me just call it plus minus plus minus plus minus. Okay. So. Um, uh, right, so I must be able to, so it must be, uh, diagonalizable. Um, you know, once you start seeing me, start sharing my practice, again and again, you know, you know what's coming, right? Yeah, you know, I like, I like whiteboards, you know. Guys, you know, I like whiteboards. Uh, I always, I'm also a bit sarcastic sometimes. Um, okay, so um, uh, so it's diagonalizable, which means that you must be able to use these guys. So by the way, I can always eigenvalues. This eigenvalue equation is always uh, ambiguous up to a, a normalization, right? So I'm going to choose as long as I choose these guys to be normalized to unity. Then, so again, this is just a linear algebra problem, right? I'll, I'll, I'm going to connect it to SL2C in a, in a second so that you can see why it is, in fact, uh, you know, uh, the case that you should view this as spinner indices and in particular one is I'm dotted and one is dotted. So, why? So, in the first place, because it's a permission operator, that means sigma dot p. Uh, plus, at once you have diagonalized it in this way, I must be able to uh, write it as a spectral decomposition. Right? So, so maybe I should write it in the abstract way. So if you know your uh, operator's permission, you must be able to write it over some of eigenvalues and in the bra cap corresponding to its eigencaps. Right? This is basically the spectral spectral in the composition of your formation of operator.
Okay. And so we must hold also for this guy because we have just seen its uh, permission and as we just argued, uh, it must therefore look like this. So, so if I write it as a, a matrix, then it is now a, um, uh, actually, yeah, so this is the place where now it's easier to write it as a, um, uh, uh, index notation. Let me, okay, let me try to write it in terms of, of vectors. So lambda plus C plus, but now this is a two component object, uh, and then you've got to write C plus arrow, but you're going to do a dagger on it. Okay, so this, this is like, this is like a bra over here, this is like a cat over here. Okay. And then you do the same thing for the other eigenstate. So, uh, well, the minus, and then C minus, uh, and then C minus dagger. Okay. Um, so that you can see it's an operator, right? Because this is uh, a vector dagger, vector being the two component case. Uh, uh, that's all I mean at this point. This, this will turn out to be spinners. Uh, so, you, know, you can probably already see it. But you can see that as an operator because this dagger will act on a, on a vector and will give you a scalar and will return to a vector because of this guy here. Uh, but I don't like this notation right? because, it's, it's, uh, because it, it's actually, you can see, it's a little bit cumbersome. And so uh, what I prefer is um, just to go straight to ask, what is the AB component of this? Okay. The AB component of this which I will not shy away from putting a dot, uh, is, again, uh, because it's a permission operator, it is an eigenvalue times the eigen, the eighth component of the eigen uh, vector, and then, because of this dagger, right, uh, because of this, this bra here, it's going to be a C plus complex conjugate B. And now you start to see why why I put a dot on the on the B uh, 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 index B, because of this dagger or because of this bra. Okay. Uh, because of this complex conjugate, you can see that if this transforms like a spinner, this is just this complex conjugate. So if this guy transforms like L, this guy better transform like L star. And so let me, let me not stop that. Let me complete the, the equation. Okay, so lambda minus C minus A and then C minus complex conjugate B dot. Okay. So again, as uh, spinner, if they're spinner, they are spinner, they are spinner uh, uh, you, will, you will see that if C minus is a spinner, then C minus star better transform like L star. Right? If, it, if the former transforms like L, the latter better transform like L star. So in fact, this explains if if I turn out to be right that these are spinners, then uh, these guys better uh, transform like L star. And um, uh, uh, and that at least explains why the notation is as such. Right? Otherwise, AB is just a row number and a column number. Uh, but now we see why there is, in fact, a distinction. So are they spinners? Well, uh, what are we doing here? So we are, in fact, what we are doing, it, in fact, remember, uh, uh, is the Lorentz group. Why? Because of this equation here. So let's, in fact, think about what it means at this level. So if you write this guy down, this transformation, uh, down using index notation, what is happening? Uh, remember, this is called C A B dot. This is the definition, right? Because it's, it's just a change of basis, as I like to emphasize. So what is going on is that before I take the determinant, and the transformation actually looks like this. P A B dot. 
is contracted with L and L dagger. But in index notation, this will actually be L A M and then L star B N and let's put a dot on B N N. N is actually P N N dot. Okay. So that's the crucial relationship. Uh, this guy here, let me bring up like an apple here. Um, this guy here is in fact um, this guy. This is in that in index notation. Okay. This in particular is L dagger on the taking it from the right. Uh, L dagger taking it on the right. Uh, you just have to uh, realize that this is the co uh, common number, but the common number is contracted with the common number. So this is actually transpose. And so, and, and together with the, with the complex conjugate, that is in fact the dagger. So what we're saying is that the determinant, so again, if you stick to index notation, determinant of PAB dot is P squared. And this is going to transform into uh, a uh, determinant of uh, p. This is this this is now transformed into some new p prime, right? I, I'm sorry. Let me write it down. Uh, uh, so this guy, remember, we have already argued, is going to give you. Uh, before you even take the determinant, it's going to give you a transform or rents transform P. So this is going to be P prime A B dot. Where P prime, if you're still used to thinking about space time index, is lambda A alpha beta P beta. Right? Which of course, we always have to make contact with this guy. I always we don't know whether we're doing more rents transformations or not. But once you get used to it, then you can see that's all we're doing. Going from P A B dot to P prime A B dot. And what we're saying is that determinant of P A B dot in, in this notation is P squared. And then upon a Lorentz transformation, of, upon this kind of transformation, and uh, you get P prime squared, which is uh, by the my square is almost p alpha p alpha, uh, and and therefore p p prime squared is p prime alpha p prime alpha, but this comes from taking the determinant of p prime a b dot. Okay. But what is important to highlight is this guys contracted with my two indices. Uh, what are they doing? They're actually being contracted with these spinners. And that's the crucial point. Uh, they are spinners exactly because of how we discovered this SL, how SL to C is, is connected to the moments. Okay. So let me write it down explicitly so that you can see explicitly they are in fact spinners exactly the way I want them to be. Right. So, so uh, again, Apple. Uh, I should call it apple prime because um, now I'm going to stick in that uh, expression, right? So PAB dot, PAB dot is by spectral decomposition, by permissivity, basically. Permissivity. Uh, is lambda plus C plus A C plus complex conjugate B dot plus lambda minus C plus, sorry, C minus A C minus B dot complex conjugate. Okay. And uh, uh, the transformation we did in, in, in that equation corresponds to contracting these guys with the L and L star. Uh, L A L A M and L star B dot N dot uh, P A B dot. So what is that? That is in fact nothing but let me just uh, uh, <coughs> uh, 
distribute this into the spinners. Right? So this is nothing but lambda plus, and then you have L A M contracted with C plus M. And then this guy, you can package it with that guy, so L star uh, B dot N dot C plus complex conjugate N dot plus the corresponding guys for uh, minus. So let me let me let me let me save myself some writing. So I'll just say class swap with minus. Okay, and by that I just mean this becomes uh, the minus, then you have C minus, C minus star, uh, but otherwise uh, everything is of the same. You should add the same thing, just with plus, swap, or minus. So this is the explicit, explicit uh, 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 display uh, or demonstration that. Demonstration that these two component objects that are otherwise just eigen vectors of my sigma dot p, right? They, they, before you uh, realize the connection of this to the Lorentz group here, uh, you thought, oh well, these are just eigen vectors of sigma dot p that happens to be two component objects. But because I can establish it between L and L star, uh, L and L vector. And I see, see the connection to the Lorentz group. This, in fact, becomes the explicit demonstration that C plus minus are spinners. Okay. And you see why you also see why there's a need for L and L star because L star transforms the the bra, so to speak, and L transforms the cats uh, in the in the in the in the bra cat notation that I, I just erased. Okay. Um, so that's in fact how uh, we should understand these guys. It's an explicit demonstration uh, what uh, what they are. Uh, uh, the other thing I should say is that so far I've been completely uh, uh, opaque about what lambda plus minus are, but you can work out quite easily uh, what they are right? because <clears throat> because. Um, And I, I'm going to talk about it because, in fact, you will, in your uh, homework, next homework, uh, work out what these guys are, C plus minus. You work them out by uh, directly rotating them in spinner space. Okay, because now you know what the L's are. Right? So if you know what the L's are, that means you can start from, for example, you can start from 1, 0. Uh, you have to figure out what that 1, 0 means in this context, right? it means something. Zero, one, of course, we call it spin up and spin down. But now, now, you, now you have to ask yourself, what does it mean? Well, actually, we, we already know. Right? It means that when you um, apply sigma 3 over 2, uh, which means now you have um, take a particular axis, and you act on these guys, you will find that, of course, these are spin up and spin down states in the usual sense. And you get plus uh, 1, 0, and then you get minus 0, 1. So these are spin up and uh, down states. But the eigenvectors of the uh, uh, P dotted in the sigma, but P now points in the third direction. Okay. Uh, but now you can take what you learn that spinners transform under L. Or L star, if you are talking about the dotted one, uh, to in fact take these guys and just rotate them to whatever you want. Okay. Uh, very similar as if you solve a uh, special relativistic special relativistic problem. Um, sometimes the general case is tough to solve. So what you do is you okay, you know, if it's a if it's a physical, very often if it's a physical system. You can boost to the rest frame, and then the problem usually becomes easier to analyze. Um, and uh, and then uh, 
uh, you can say, okay, now I've analyzed it in this last frame, then I can go to any frame I want because I know it's a relativistic covariant system. So I can just push it at any frame. So in fact, we'll take this strategy, right, and, and uh, as a warm-up, you will work out for yourself. Starting from the spin up and spin down system, you can in fact rotate it to any uh, to any helicity state. So let me explain that a little bit. So what are the lambda plus minus and the eigen states? Right. So firstly, again, this is really just a linear algebra problem. Right. Sigma dot p is what <coughs> is p uh, zero times the identity two by two identity matrix. Uh, give me a few more minutes, uh, uh, and then plus pi uh, sigma i, okay? And I'm going to define this to be p0, uh, I'm going to leave out the identity because it's just, just, uh, just one, basically, in, in this two by two language, right? And then this I'm going to call p dot sigma, okay? So, uh, obviously, identity commutes with p dot sigma, identity commutes with everybody. So actually, uh, what you see is that the eigenstates, uh, remember, if A and B are permission and they commute, then they must share, huh? Yes, yes, very good. Yeah, so it must be simultaneously diagonalizable. Right, yeah, they, they must share the same uh, eigen, eigen system uh, as exactly as the even say. It must be simultaneously diagonalizable. So, all we have to understand is therefore what are the eigen states of P dot sigma? And at this point, I hope it's a little bit more familiar. So I hope you've seen some of this in, in quantum mechanics. In fact, I will put a I will put a sigma over two just to remind you that in non-relativistic quantum mechanics, sigma over two should have already been discussed. Right? This is just the spin operator uh, of your electron, and p dotted to it just means that you are now looking for. Um, uh, helicity. This is basically spin heuristically, right? You should think about spin projected along the momentum. And and uh, and this is usually called helicity. We'll, we'll, we'll come up, we'll, we'll come across helicity again. Uh, but I just, let me just note that in relativist, in a relativistic situation, um, uh, you can always outrun a time-like particle, right? So this is not a Lorentz invariant. Uh, you can always outrun the, the, you can boost it to a, a different frame, basically, right? So P is not, this is not a Lorentz invariant. But this is, in fact, uh, in this context, we do call it a helicity operator. And so even though it is not a relativistically invariant object. It does show up in a relativistic context. Sigma dot p is a relativistic object. And what we see is that by diagonalizing this guy, we would also diagonalize, obviously, identity. Right? Identity is already diagonal. So whatever basis you choose, it's going to be diagonal. Uh, but that would mean that if I diagonalize this, I would have simultaneously diagonalized this, which means I will have diagonalized sigma dot p. So that's really all that's happening. Sigma dot p uh, or sigma dot p over two uh, c plus minus will give you what? It will give you. You already know, by the way, if you if you already know that um, uh, if you look at the third direction, these are the eigenstates. Right? So right away you can tell that uh, uh, these guys upon diagonalization. Uh, the only difference is that now you, know, you pick a different direction other than the third direction. But then there's nothing special about the third direction. So you know, I mean, you can do it by direct calculation, but let me just uh, appeal to what you hopefully already know from quantum mechanics. 
There's no special thing about P. You know, the third dimension. So this will give you P times uh, plus or minus C plus minus. It has to be by P. I should explain. P is just the magnitude of the vector. It has to. Yeah, just like uh, just like in that case. Right? So if you just let P be P times the third axis, then you will get sigma three times P, which will reduce that to the K. So you can see that, that has to be what's going to happen. And so um, the actual solution of this, of course, you must do some some algebra and, and solve for it. In fact, in your homework, uh, that's exactly what I'll make you do. Instead of uh, making you solve that eigenvalue equation, eigen system equation, you you already know the solution to do this, and I'll make you rotate this system to that system, and you will discover from that what the solutions to these guys are. The eigenvalues, you already know what they are. We, we just worked that out. We just reduced it. But the item that this is, it takes a bit of work. So you will do it by uh, by understanding the geometry together with what the rotation operators are in this in this case. And um, let me just finish by writing down the whole the whole um, answer, right? Because uh, this I've only diagonalized sigma dot sigma vector dot p vector. But of course, we are dealing with a relativistic system. So the better for completeness, write down the whole thing. So remember, uh, what we'll have is therefore the following: uh, sigma dot p acting on c plus minus. Remember, this is now the simultaneous eigenstate of the uh, sigma vector dot sig p vector and the um, uh, eigen. Uh, uh, sorry, the identity uh, term. So this is what? This is actually P0 times identity, let me write it down explicitly, plus sigma dot P. Okay, C plus minus. But uh, now you see it explicitly. Right? This active on this guy just gives you back P0. Uh, but this guy now gives you plus or minus P, the magnitude. Uh, times C plus minus. And so you see what lambda plus minus is. Now lambda plus minus is just nothing but the zero component of momentum plus or minus the magnitude of the spatial components. And later on when we do uh, when we do uh, physics, uh, actual physics, where we solve the Dirac equation then of course these momentum have to obey the corresponding dispersion relations. Right? So if there's a massive particle, uh, p squared will be m squared, p, p, p alpha, p alpha will be. So let me write down for for uh, if for real part for uh, real particles or physical particles. Uh, <clears throat> they will have to obey dispersion relations, right? So P squared, P alpha, P alpha, this is going to become M squared, which means that P zero is somehow independent, right? Momentum can point in any way you want. It can be as large as you want, depending on how powerful your collider is. But once you have fixed uh, the, the spatial momentum, the energy is, is, is not an independent variable anymore, right? So P naught, of course, is just, just energy. Um, so, and then, if it's massless, um, uh, the mass m, which is greater than zero, and if it's massless, um, then p squared will be zero. Right? And it will turn out that for, for uh, fermions, um, uh, mass and massive, mass, sorry, massless and massive, there's no discontinuity in this discussion. Right? Whatever we talk about, you know, will uh, uh, will will apply for both mass massless and massive fermions, spin half particles. Uh, the, the funny thing happens when we talk about photons. Uh, there is a there is a big difference between massless photons and massive photons. 
uh, uh, the group theory as if you work out, if you work it out. I don't know if you have the time to work that out in great detail because you know, we've already gone about one month. Uh, so I think it's time to speed up a little bit. Uh, but, but this part of group theory is important because it tells you how relativity is important in, in, in high energy physics. But anyway, so by, that, by the time we get the photons, uh, I will mention again that the group theory associated with um, um, uh, mass, massless versus massive uh, is, 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 big, is a big difference in the sense that there's a jump, in the, there's a jump, discontinuous jump in the number of allowed degrees of freedom. Um, but anyway, so uh, I think we should stop here today. So, so uh, again, we have discovered this relativistic object is built out of spinners. Right? These are spinners exactly because they are, they are what allow us to discover why SL2C, the group SL2C, is related to the Lorentz group. Um, and so these guys, in fact, transforms the, L, the C plus and C minus transform as L, uh, uh, and then the bra part of this operator uh, transforms by L star, right? And so, uh, and furthermore, to diagonalize this operator, we discover that actually it just comes down to diagonalizing the helicity operator, even though it's a non-relativistic concept. Uh, strictly speaking, because it's not a uh, invariant under Lorentz transformation, but in this case, the basically the spin projected along the momentum turns out to be the key. Once it diagonalizes it, everything else is diagonal, and we discover that the eigenvalues are as such. So um, let me actually let me finish one last thing because uh, in fact um, I I um, want to emphasize. That uh, this is this is uh, just to summarize, right? So um, if you think about it just in terms of the power matrices, that means the following: L A B, uh, L and L A M, L star, uh, B N, and then I have to put a dot on these guys: sigma mu. M and dot. This guy, in fact, gives you uh, sigma nu a b dot lambda nu mu. Okay. So uh, what you see is that this is because I, I want to make sure I, I answer your question explicitly. This guy, in fact, is a tensor product. You can think of this as a tensor product between the L and the L star representations. Right? And these guys are now acting on your, uh, let me write it down, right? A, B, A, yeah, A, B dot, M, and dot. Uh, this is probably not a good way to write it. Let me just write it as A, M, and then B dot, M dot, uh, these indices are for this guy, these indices are for this guy, uh, acting on this object, which are the Pauli operators. And you see that what they, that what they do is they implement a linear transformation of these uh, states. You can think of them as basically vectors, uh, because they are. In fact, sigma mu span the space of uh, two dimensional operators. And the linear operator that is induced, that is transforming the sigma, is nothing but your usual Lorentz space time Lorentz transformation. Sigma nu a b dot. Yeah? And so, so this, in fact, is an explicit uh, Later on, we discover that, uh, that, that's why I want to talk about math and right handed first. But <clears throat> I'll say it again. Uh, later, we discover that this is actually the right handed guy. So uh, this is one zero one half, and then this guy is one half zero, and then uh, basically you're taking the tensor product of this guy. 
Uh, so, so spin half plus spin half, right, is spin one. And that's how you get spin one. So, so basically, uh, spin half uh, plus, let me say add, let me put it to the adding, spin half with spin half, in this case, is spin one. Any other questions? Uh, yeah. It's for for team controllers, uh, right? Mm -hmm. So when we yeah. when we discuss the rough mm -hmm. the rough spinner, yeah. it is for controller, and yeah. there was a more like a direct sum of the yeah. time line. Right? right, right, right. So so that's right. So so the direct spinner is in fact nothing but the direct sum of uh of two the left handed and the right handed guys, at least in the basis that we work in. Um, and, and in fact, the reason why we do that is because of parity. So again, I hope you know that's why it's, it's, it's a non-trivial discussion. So next week, I will explain uh, what left and right-handed in this case mean. Um, uh, actually, I think you can call it either way: one right, one. You call one left, one the other one is right. Uh, if you call one right, the other one is left. Right. So the left and right itself is not. Uh, meaningful as far as I can tell. But there is a parity relationship between them in the sense that um, if you choose, if you want to switch from the left-handed spinner to right-handed spinner, it's like changing your your coordinate axis. Uh, and, and so if you didn't care about parity, then uh, you can stay in this language uh, forever and it's okay. And in fact I so I'm not actually in supersymmetry, but I believe if you do supersymmetry, uh, this notation, in fact, is very, very commonly used. Uh, and furthermore, in fact, we just had a talk yesterday about this using a modern amplitude program to compute now even in a, uh, classical gravity, right? And that, uh, in four dimensions, uh, you will find that this spinner notation or spinner technology, in fact, also has a lot of use in, the, in, in that context as well. Uh, the place to look, if you're interested, is this book by Shraniki. Shraniki uh, is a professor at UCSB, and he wrote um, his own PFT text. And I think he has a few chapters discussing this spinner capacity technology. Probably you can use uh, book also, but, but I know this is the other PFG text that now. Yeah, I think Pesky and Schroeder should really update their book because it's getting, at least for amplitudes, it's getting a little bit outdated in that sense. Right. Uh, but yeah, so, so if you care about parity, then you want to combine them. But there's no problem in just looking at this object right, and seeing that the space time vector represented by this index uh, is, is, is in fact uh, nothing but. The tensor product of the left, the right handed, and the left handed, right? At this level. It's only when you want to say, okay, what about parity? Uh, then you need to you know, start worrying about it. Because in the two, in this two by two language, there's no parity operator. So it's possible to prove. That there's no there's no operator that can bring you from P sigma i, P inverse, into minus sigma i. Uh, because actually it takes a complex conjugation. You, you need to take a complex conjugation to, con to convert sigma i into minus sigma i. There's no, there's no such operator otherwise. Uh, but because there's no such operator, yes, then, then that's why the direct equation is a 4 by 4 uh, equation, not, not a 2 by 2 one. Yeah. Good. Other questions? Okay, see you guys next week.